What's going on everybody? Got a tutorial for you today. Uh, I'm going to show you how to swap out or replace the original Xbox disk drive. I've um, done some other tutorials with the original Xbox, but a lot of people just wanted me to show them what kind of things need to be done to do that. Um, because that's typically the only part you can ever really find is just getting the original Xbox replacement drive. It's pretty hard just to find the lasers by themselves and stuff like that. Um, these are the three drives that came in the original Xbox we got. I know the Thompson was first. I could be wrong on this, so if I am, you can correct me in the comments. Um, but I believe the Samsung was next, and then there was the Philips. The Philips is the most popular. Uh, a lot of people consider it to be the most reliable. I think there's a few type of modding things you can do with this that you can't do with the others as well. Um, but I'm not 100% sure. I haven't really done any soft modding in a, in a long time. I think that's mainly with the hard drives and everything, but anyways, um, the next one is the Samsung, and honestly, from all the times I've worked, I think the reliability of the Philips and the Samsung are the exact same. Um, I mean, I really haven't seen a difference as far as failure rate or as how long they last. Um, next is the Thompson. Uh, it's definitely the least reliable. Uh, it was the first one ever made, but even still... This drive is more solid than most of the drives in the Xbox 360 console, um, which is kind of odd, but I mean, they're, they, overall, this one isn't as good as these, but it is usually cheaper. Um, so if, you, if you're trying to get the cheapest possible thing, then you'll want to find the Thompson. Um, now, something you should know, if you've worked with the Xbox 360, uh, you know that you can't just swap out the drive, even Steven. Um, you have to do a lot of extra stuff to uh, swap out the PCB boards, and it has to match the motherboard, but that doesn't work like that for the original Xbox. Um, so, for instance, if the original drive, original Xbox has a Thompson, you can put a Thompson, a Philips, or a Samsung in there. They'll all fit, they all connect the same way, and it'll work just fine no matter what uh, version, original Xbox console you have. So that's a big plus. Um, as long as it's an original Xbox drive, it'll it'll work with whatever console you have. Um, I'm going to put a link down in the description uh, to the Tinker Mods website, which is where you can find these drives. They're pretty fairly priced. Uh, the Philips is 32. I believe this the Samsung is uh, 28, and then this one I think, or this one's 28. Maybe this one's 30. Um, they, the Philips, they don't have as much uh, ticker mods. You know, we just don't have that many of these because they sell really quick. Uh, there's plenty of Samsungs and Thompsons, though. So, anyways, if you need a replacement drive, I will put the link in there. What you'll have to do is scroll to the bottom of the page, and you'll see the, the listings for each of these drives. All right. So, let's get on to the tutorial now. Here's our original Xbox. There's actually nothing wrong with this, and, and actually I'm going to switch the drive right back into it because this is soft modded. So don't really want to switch anything out. I want to leave it like it is. But I will show you how to replace it. The uh, thing you're going to need is a Torx T20 bit, and uh, that's where, where we will get started here. Now normally there are pads uh, here, 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 and here. I, those are already pulled up. Like I said, this is soft modded, so... Um, already had to take this apart. So all you got to do is use that Torx head to go ahead and start getting these bolts out, or screws, whatever you prefer to call them. And uh, you do have to remember that if you haven't popped it, there's one under this label and one under this label. All you'll have to do is just kind of stick your uh, tool through the label and start unscrewing it, and it'll pop out and everything on its own. Nothing crazy to that. Now what we're going to do is we're just going to pop the top of this off, slides right out of there, set it aside. And as you can see, this has a Thompson in it, uh, but I'm just going to, I'll go ahead and put a Thompson in it, but like I said, you can put whatever drive you want to in there. So the next thing we got to do is we got to pull this, these ribbons out of here. First thing we do is there's, this is the power cord for the uh, 
hard drive, you gotta you notice it's kind of stuck in there. You gotta kind of dismantle it and then get it out of this nook over here on the side so that it's nice and loose. Um, then you disconnect that from the back, set it aside. Disconnect this one and set it aside. Uh, next, there's a little bolt right here. You're going to need a size T8 Torx head for that. So let me pull that out real quick. You know, if I can find them. Alright. So we're going to take that out. And you do have to take that out first because the hard drive. The disk drive cannot come out unless you put the hard drive out first. So that slides out just like that. Okay, now for this one, I'm going to need an extender. This one, uh, this bolt that's right here is pretty deep in there, and so you have to have something narrow that will actually go down in there. So I have a little extender, and there's one on each side, and that's a T8 size as well. So you want to unscrew those. Now that's just going to pop right out. Just be careful not to rip these cables out. You want to pull the SATA cable out. It just kind of wiggles out. And you pull this IDE cable out. You just kind of wiggle it kind of like that. And your drive's out. Alright. So I've got my the other Thompson here. As you can see I have two Thompsons. All we got to do is we got to... First we're going to pop... If you look, there's like a little black casing it's in. It's clipped on right here and the same place on the other side right here so you just kind of pull it outwards and down and that pops out and all you do is you just put the new one Hold on. all you gotta do is you gotta put the new one and set it back down into place get it clipped in there like the other one was just like that and you're gonna go ahead you're gonna connect the IDE cable again and connect the power cable. Call it a SATA cable already, but I don't really think that's technically what it's supposed to be called. Then you just get it worked back in there. There we go. Alright, now we're going to tighten these bolts back up. Just like that. All right, now all we got to do is just reconnect everything, and we're really, I mean, really, that's it. I mean, there's nothing special to it whatsoever. So what we're going to do is we're going to slide this back in. And you got to kind of, this cable for the hard drive, you got to work that back into the little slot as well. And then you got to um, work it back into that slot. And work it back into these little crevices here. And plug it back in. Snap it in there. Next, we're going to, that little screw is right here. We'll tighten that back up. Now we're going to connect this IDE cable again. Yeah, I can find the right place. And use that little clip to hold that cable down and that's it all you got to do is pop the top of the case back on and we're done um, so I hope this video helped you like I said it's not a real hard process um, it's a lot simpler than any of the other consoles out there at least on the market today uh, if you liked it make sure to return the favor if it helped you and uh, you can do that by liking the video subscribing to my page there's a lot of re repair tutorials modding tutorials all kinds of cool stuff to do with hardware and gaming consoles so uh, anyways, you wouldn't be disappointed with it. Uh, and that's going to be it for this. So until next time, guys.